pretty interesting. Has anyone here ever written games? Written any programming games? Yeah, or maybe I'll just leave and if if and you can do the talk. What do you reckon? <laughs> Yeah? Ah, oh, good old basic. Was it Q basic or just a basic basic? Yeah. Hmm. When was when did you do that? What what the what do you mean the floor disappears from under you? Oh, I know what you're talking about. That game. Okay, cool. So we're beginning game development on Linux. Um, So why is Linux important for gaming and what, what do I think that's ex exciting? So there's a lot of new technology coming out at the moment like 3D printers, like uh, the Oculus Rift. Um, one of my friends actually bought this little band and it goes around your arm and then when you move your hand it can sense what your hand's doing based on the muscles in your arm and all these cool things like this. And you've got people making their own little sort of like uh, Game Boy type things and that with the 3D printers. So I think a lot of people are going to be able to use uh, this kind of new technology like Raspberry Pis or Arduinos and they're going to be able to hook that up into Linux, whether it's CMOS or whatever. And you're going to have people, at least I hope so anyway, making, making brand new gaming devices and that can be done with Linux because you can go straight into the hardware. You don't have to go through a spaghetti mess of Windows or something like that, you know what I mean? So if somebody's going to make a brand new um, gaming, gaming thing, they're probably going to want to use it with Linux. And SteamOS is going to bring Linux to the living room so you can set up your Linux box in your living room. Android is Linux. And um, yeah, generally all the tablets and that coming out seem to be Linux based. So does anybody recognize any of these games? Free Civ, Tux, Racer, Sour, Broughton, or Zero AD? Yeah, Zero AD? Ah, Free, Free Civ and Tux Racer. So there's been, been a bit of a culture going for uh, Linux games. Free Free Civ has been ported to Android. Tux Racer is just a Mario Kart clone. Um, Cube 2, Sal Broughton. Did anybody play Quake 3? It's kind of like a first person shooter clone. And I'm, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of that later. And Zero AD is a um, online, it's an RTS like Age of Empires. Who yeah, played that? There's a game called Programming Linux Game. I mean, a book called Programming Linux Games, and um, I think the guy who wrote it actually died, but um, he was really, really young. Like he was only 26 or something, and um, he talks a lot about like OpenAL, a OpenAL. That's an API for the sound. OpenGL. Um, yeah. So that's just a list of some of some of the APIs. But if you can't program, don't worry because I've got a good understanding. So I'm going to give you a good understanding of um, Ningo talking about this. Um, so what is abstract? How many people can't program again? There's many people here. So there's, there's only a couple people so I'll, I'll skim through this pretty quickly. So what is abstraction? Abstraction is um, that the idea that you don't, you don't need to understand electricity to turn on a light and you don't need to be a plumber in order to turn on a tap. You don't need to understand how graphics work in order to make a game with great graphics. A programmer who makes, uh, who makes 3D rendering programs doesn't need to write a game. So 
abstraction is different different levels of things di of where um, it's kind of like a black box from one area to another. So when when you're writing a game, you don't have to know some extremely complicated um, programming details. You can just as I've written with the pseudo code here, you more or less are going to say x y which is where you want the image to be drawn on the screen, then you're going to say my image equals graphics API dot load image where your image is graphics API dot display image my image and at these coordinates. So does, is everybody cool with the idea of how you would draw something on the screen like that? Is there anybody who needs further explanation or that? No? Okay. Cool. So um, if you can't code, um, it takes about 20 hours to get started. So if you're here and you're interested and you haven't haven't been coding, um, or you can read this slide. Take about 20 hours to get started. First programs you'd want to write if you're going straight into game development from zero coding experience. Do a Hello World. Do a degree to Celsius converter. Print out the Fibonacci sequence, get used to loops, number guessing game, input random numbers, um, and eventually programming your own physics. Um, so everybody said they can program, so my suggestion is if you can't program, start off with Java or Python. Uh, they, this is pretty cool. So even if even if you can program, you can check out these guys and they'll walk you through the appropriate APIs. So the second one, Goran Milanovic, is uh, I think he's from he's from Eastern Europe somewhere. Anyway, um, he he talks about the Blender API. So Blender is a 3D program, and the API for Blender lets you write games in the Blender game engine. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, a bit later. Um, the C++ guy, another great uh, YouTube channel, he will walk you through the uh, SDL, OpenGL. So OpenGL is the really low level one where you would sort of say I want to draw a point here and a point here and a point here and it'll give you a triangle. O OpenGL is a state machine. So OpenGL is an API you say to it, let's draw triangles and then OpenGL goes over to triangle mode and you say uh, X position 4, Y position 3, X position 5, Y position 0, X position 0, Y position 0 and then it will give you a triangle in those two dimensional coordinates. It actually takes three dimensional coordinates but you get the idea. So a state machine is something that when it's doing one thing, it's doing that. And then when it's doing another thing, it's doing another thing. So when it's drawing triangles, you say GL begin and you give it your points for your triangle. Then you say GL end and then you can tell it to do other things like load images, blah, 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 blah. Uh, mathematics is... Um, not too difficult for games, but it can can be difficult. Gonna have to know quite a bit of algebra, at least just basic algebra. Vectors, Cartesian coordinates, uh, trigonometry, and basic calculus. You're gonna need basic uh, calculus like delta time, so that you can, uh, if you if you have a set of images like 12 images and you want to, and it's a person running, like one of those old flick books, you say to it, I want to change by, I want to, every time it goes through, you can say, I want you to change by one frame times delta time, and your delta time will take track of how fast your program is running. So if it was, so if it's not time for it to go to the next frame yet, then delta time is like, O point, or is, well, if, de if delta time is like less less than what you want, then you won't want it to flick to the next frame, so your program doesn't go too fast. Um, okay. 
game game theory. So when you're working on a game, and I'm glad I got over that programming bit because everybody seems to know how to program here. Um, when you're making a game, the best way to do it is to start with how you want the game to be controlled and where you want uh, what you want the controls to where you want the camera to be, the controls and the camera. So decide on where you want the camera to be and decide on what you want the controls. So that is if you want to make a game that's top down and you control it with a joystick, that's a great place to start a game. A bad place to start a game is I want to make a game about a dragon who breathes fire, who um, hates people and burns down buildings. Um, it's starting to sound like a great game. But um, don't start with the story. Start with the controls and then put the story onto the controls. So a lot of people are going around, they've got this awesome game in their head and it's about a medieval wizard who can fly and do all sorts of things, but it doesn't put you in the seat where you can visualize yourself playing the game because that's what you need to do. That's what everybody on the project needs to do. Great ideas suck and they're all confusing. Sonic is a ridiculous game. It's about a hedgehog hog that runs. I mean, there's no way that somebody was just sitting there and said, I'm going to make a game about a hedgehog that runs. No way. What's more likely is that somebody was working on the mechanics of what happens in Sonic and then was like, hey, this is kind of cool. I press down and I run and if there's an enemy in front of me, then they get knocked over when I'm in this sort of spinning mode. So, so if you want to make a game, take, take a game, uh, so, I don't know, say Mario. Right, take a game like Mario, build the underlying mechanics and then paint whatever you want on top of it. Don't try to get the story and then try to build the game. Get the game and then make the story. You paint over the programming, putting the programming over the idea. It, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't leave, leave a lot of um, space. The only exception to that might be adventure games, like point and click adventure games because there's not really any gameplay, it's more of a story. So just just keep that in mind, that's really important. Take your controls, take your limitations, build the base and then paint over the top of that. And basic tools you'll want to use, uh, could use if you're using Linux, GIMP. GIMP is fantastic. Anybody who bags out GIMP is a horrible person. So GIMP is GIMP is fantastic. You can do pretty much. You can do, I'd say you can do more in GIMP than you can with Photoshop. You just got to get used to the fact that it's not Photoshop. In the way that Paint Shop Pro was not Photoshop, GIMP is not Photoshop. So don't expect it to be Photoshop. Blender. I'm going to be talking more about that. Tiled is a 2D level editor. So you you create your bitmap and you paint um, you paint up a big a big grid with all these tiles. So in Mario, for example, you might have had the little bricks, the little brick tile that they just put everywhere or the, the little cloud or something and then you can just paint it on. So paint a little tileable brick and then just grab that tile and go dunk, 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 dunk and that's what tiled is. It lets you make those sort of 2D side scroller games. ASE sprite is so if you're using Blender and you make an animation of a bunny running or something like that, you can then export each of the individual images, each of the individual frames of somebody running and then you can use ASE Sprite to put all those images together and then export it out as a, as a single image with image, 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 image and then that will be loaded by the 2D thing that you're using. Um, Godot has just recently been released and there's very little documentation about it but it's quite exciting because we haven't really had any good 3D game engines for Linux. On Windows they've got the Unreal Development Kit and they've got Unity. Has anybody heard of those like Unity? Yeah, so they, they, they're a bit lucky that they have Unity. Unity is pretty good but we've got 
Godot was just released, and if you wanted a sort of 3D thing or something that has 3D capability, you might check out Godot. Uh, Leadworks is just about to be released. For it's already it's been out on Windows and Mac for a long time, but it's a it's comparable to like the Source engine for Half Life or something like that. So it's a 3D engine, and it's a, it's proprietary, so you have to buy it. But um, yeah, so you have to buy it. So I'm not really gonna. Z and I'm not sure. Is it 3D? It might use um, the Quake 3 engine because that's been released. Quake 3 and Doom 3 engines they're available. So if you're a good C++ programmer. You can use the Quake 3 and Doom 3 engines because they've been made open source. You could use the Doom engine, but Quake 3 or Doom 3 is going to make the game look... Most most things like lots of games like random first-person shooters for Linux, like the new Thief game that's coming out was made on uh, Doom, the Doom 3 engine. Um, yeah, so this is the demonstrations I'm going to get to. I actually prepared for a lot fewer people seeming to know code. Last time there wasn't that many people that knew programming, but it was an introduction to programming, so few people didn't turn up. Okay, so this is what I'm going to walk you through. Can you see on the screen okay? I think that looks okay. So this is Blender. Oops. The Blender game engine. This is a game I made this morning and I'm going to remake it. Um. Can anybody see that at all, or is it just too dark? You can see it. So it's like a tank driving around. When I when I make it in a sec, I'll make sure it's a lot bigger. And he can shoot. He can move the tank. He can move the turret independently. And that red line is a is a not so friendly is points points to a not so friendly tank. That's the enemy. Ah, oh, and he shot me. He's got me. That's the pathfinding going on the red line. Okay. So Blender um, is a 3D program which you can use to make all sorts of 3D things. Um, so I'm going to make a plane and I've gone up here and I've put it into the game engine and I'm going to bring this plane all the way out and it is going to be our floor. Got a camera over here, I'm going to get rid of that. Get rid of that light for now. I actually, I actually can't see half the screen, that's why I have to move it over occasionally like this. So I'm going to go into this um, plane and I can make sure it's got physics set up on it. And then I'll go to the center and I'll make a cube. And I'll give that cube some dimensions to make it more vehicle-like. And I'll put a turret on it. This is the Blender tutorial. So I'm just putting some basic 
shapes here. I mean, I add the add the shapes with Shift A. Um, I suppose I can talk more about what I'm doing here, and then I'm holding down Y to make them rotate on the Y axis, or just pressing Y. Um, I'm going to move, just move this. I'm pressing Tab to go into edit mode, and I can press um, Control Tab to select between vertexes or uh, these are the vertexes or edges. I'm going to join those two together to create the turret, and then we've got something called game logic in Blender. Um, so with with the bottom, I'm going to parent the turret to the tank first. With the bottom half of the tank selected, I can go down here and I can go to uh, add controller. Oh wait, no, sorry. Oops. Add sensor, and I'll put a keyboard sensor in there. Actually, I'll put four of them. And this is this is how in Blender I can do all of this stuff without needing to program. So that's that's the idea here. If you can't program, or even if you can program, this is still pretty cool because you can actually uh, take the keyboard sensor, so keyboard W, and then you can add a Python script in there and pipe that into the Python script. But I'm going to be showing you how to do a few things without needing to program. Um, any And if you do program in Blender, you need to have that programming running on an object. So if you're if you want something to always be running, you would create a cube and then you would go add sensor always. And that would make it so that cube uh, is always executing whatever code you want to do in the background, which is kinda kinda strange in, in comparison to most things, but Blender offers you a way to make games without having to um, having to code. So I've got I've got four keyboard sensors here. I'll just give them a name. So W for for going forward. W S A D. Then I can add a couple actuators. And what I want are motion actuators. So red is the x axis on the whoops on there. The red one is the x axis. So when I press W, um, I think I'll rotate this. It's a bit more normal. So when when I press W, I want it to go plus one on the local x-axis. So if you're familiar with um, matrices, if this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis and this is my z-axis, but the axis of the room is that x is my y, so, so if the room has x-axis that way and y-axis that way, when I turn this this way, my x and my y are going to be aligned with the room. And then when I rotate again, my x, my local x, is going to be to the global y-axis. Yeah? So that's, that's that mathematics stuff to do with matrices that you might want to get into eventually if you do anything too complicated. So let's let's see if, if it does go forward when I whoop, that doesn't look nice. Um, oh, it's because I haven't got any light in there, I think. Okay, so let's see what happens. Yep, and he goes forward. Okay, so back to this object here, and that's that's this 
bottom half of the tank that has the keyboard controllers attached to it. So when I put the controls on the turret, I'll select the turret. And the turret is parent is the child of the bottom half of the tank. So anywhere the bottom half moves, the top half moves. But if the child moves, the bottom half doesn't move. I found that a bit fast. I'll make that 0 0.3. 0 0.3. And then this is backwards minus 0.3. Uh, and then this is rotation on the Z axis. And we'll have a look at that. Oh, that's not what I want. <laughs> Oh, that's why I didn't actually put it in. I put it in location, not rotation. If you get bored, grab yourself some pizza. I think there's still heaps of pizza there. I won't be offended. Um, okay, let's have a look. Okay, that's... That's working. Oh, no, that's not working. That's not trans translating locally. Oh. Okay, so now it's, now it's moving locally on its axis. It's turning a bit slow. What what time is it? What time do we have a break? It's seven now. Are we having? Well, we go to we go to eight, don't we? About eight. Okay. Okay. So now I select the turret. I'll just quickly jump over to the turret with right click. If you want if you want to learn to use Blender, you, I can't really give you an entire tutorial on Blender, but like everything else. I've said um, all of this stuff is somewhere on the internet, so just Google it. And even better, most of it has video tutorials. So just go to YouTube and go Blender Basics and spend part of your weekend, you know, uh, learning how to do that. So I'm going to throw that onto some motion uh, keyboard, keyboard sensors to motion actuators again. And we want this to rotate on the Z axis. Not only that, we want to make sure that the axis is in the center of the turning part of the turret. So I select the geometry and put it there. OK. On the Z axis, rotate by minus 1, 1. Now let's see what happens. Okay. So we got the tank. It's turning. Whoops. That's not how I want the turret to turn. <laughs> um, and I've actually got my... Rotation only going one way. Um, that's right. So this is the wrong way around. Okay. So I can cross over those circuits there. Add a camera, shift A, camera. 
then I need to go into my object properties for the camera to make sure it's rotated the right, right way. Just press N. Rotate the camera to the position. Press numpad zero to look at the camera. Bring it back a bit. And parent the camera to the tank. So now it is moving around with the tank and the turret is moving. So I'm going to make the ground much bigger. I'm going to split it up into little pieces. Then I'm going to grab little bits of the ground and I'm going to extrude them into the air. It's control R to... How many people here are Blender users? A couple people use Blender, about five people. That So... Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, well, I just just not sure whether I should be. Um, I didn't intend to speak all about the finite things about the shortcuts or anything. I just wanted to give everybody a quick look at how you can actually. It is. Yeah. And I intended to get a little. Um, well. Yeah. Um, yeah, fundamentally all 3D programs um, still seem to work on the same sort of principles. Um, but what makes Blender amazing is that it has this um, oops, game engine that you can do these on. And the reason I'm cutting up these buildings into little pieces, or they're, I'm saying they're buildings, they're just to make the uh, terrain more interesting, is that you need those to make the uh, light properly. So each of these, each of these vertices, the computer says, how, how light is it uh, here? And then it gives this square one color and then it says how light is it here and it gives that square one one color but because each of these squares on the on the low level of the computer is actually a triangle split in half it'll use that triangle to shade to to put a gradient through that triangle so like a you know like a gradient gray, black to white gray to light gray or whatever so it uses those Great. So here we can see it on this one really well. On this, on this square, we can see that the color assigned to here is is a mid gray, and then the color assigned to here is a light gray, and it's just given a smooth computer generated, mathematically generated uh, gradient from there to there. So if I don't if I don't have these squares then you'll just get basically one big gradient. And you can kind of see the effect there where you've got between uh, this, these two triangles, you've got the light grey, same sort of grey pattern happening there, like a double triangle shape or something. So, okay, that's pretty fun. Um, I'll go back over to the tank now. I'll just adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, and I'll throw a spotlight on the camera, on the tank, sorry. Um, okay, oh, actually, I parented it to the base of the tank and I wanted to put it on the 
I wanted to put it on the turret. And um, give it a nice color, give it a yellow, so we get yellow light out of it. Yeah, sorry if that looks weird how I've got everything in the corner there. I, I can only see from here. There, hold on. This this is my this is what I can see on my screen here. Then I've got that up there, but I can't read the writing for up from uh, up on that screen, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm just gonna make the size of the cone uh, of the spotlight a bit smaller. So maybe fifteen degrees. Okay. And I'll parent that to the turret. Now if I press O, uh, we can see the spotlight moving along the buildings there. That's a bit of fun. And um, now I'll make the enemy. So I'll select the tank and the spotlight and I'll duplicate it. And I'll move it over here. I will then have to remove the buildings from the terrain. Blender has support for what are called navigation meshes. Well, the game engine has support for navigation meshes, which is uh, I can I can just select this ground and I can go over to the uh, scene properties for the ground and I can click build navigation mesh and now it's going to give me this funny colored thing which is going to allow the enemy tank to drive around the map so I'll be able to say to the enemy tank go to this position um, over here and the enemy tank can be all the way over wherever it is over here and it will know from the navigation mesh how to get there and navigate around any obstacles that are there. Uh, it has some limitations so jumping doesn't work if it has to jump over an object um, it doesn't know what to do at the moment. Um, but you could program it, you could say go to this point and then at that point you would cease having the navigation mesh controller and you would tell it once you get this point I want you to do a jump thing. So we go back into this logic editor again which is the the cool part of the Blender game engine. Um, so if I, if I had, if I wanted to hard code what the tank's going to do in Python, I would click always and I would have an always sensor to mean that every every tick, every time it goes through the game loop, I want it to run this Python script. Um, but I didn't, I'm not going to sit here and code any Python scripts because I haven't done this, uh, used, used the Blender Game Engine API for a, about a couple months and I can't remember the all the calls but it is it is pretty cool it's got good documentation and um, Goran Milanovic has really good uh, tutorials I'll um, it's it's uh, www.nilunder.com nil under dot com so if you want to do some coding in the blender game engine um, make sure you write down that website because that guy right now seems to have the best uh, Python tutorials for Blender Game Engine. If you already know Python, um, you'll probably be able to pick it up very very quickly. It's just things like um, object.actuator uh, and you would say object.actuator and then in, in uh, you'd search for the string keyboard or something and then, you, then you'd say keyboard equals true and you'd get the same effect as um, as what it's doing here where it's just sensing that. So when the sensor's like that, 
Um, yeah, so right now I want to always sensor on it and I want it to... I want it to do some steering and the behaviour is going to be path following and the target object is, which I could have named, Oops. So I've got to, I'm going to go and name my tank. Whoop. Player. Whoops. Player tank. Okay. Go to the enemy tank. The target object is the player tank. And the navigation mesh is called nav mesh. Okay. So now what happens? Does he find me or not? No? No, he doesn't. He's just sitting there. Damn. Okay. Must have forgotten something. That's all right. It happens all the time. I always forget something every time. Uh, whoops. Uh, visualize. No. No. Oh, that's why I made it this morning so I could, uh, in case I forgot something, just reference what I did. Tank game blender. So here you can see, same as before, I've got the. Um, I've got the two tanks in this one. Uh, actually, no, wait, that is that's today's one. Here's, whoops, here's the one I made earlier. Always and steering player tank main facing. Hmm. Okay, well I think I'll call that a break time because I said we'd have a break um, five minutes ago. So have a break, have some pizza, and have a have a have a bit of a drink. Um, when we come back, I'll I'll do a little bit more on um, Blender, and um, then I'll show you Sour Broughton and and some of the other things.
Hey, I'm just going to put the uh, uh, the online resources on the screen. So if you wanted to uh, look at these, uh, write them down now. I wanted to bring printouts, but um, it was one of those days with the printers. So, damn, damn the printers. Yeah, so online resources, if you wanted to grab that, take a picture of it or something. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. And I'm just going to move it down so it doesn't hit your thing as much. Can you talk? Uh, hello? Yep. Don't, don't talk down, just talk. Down. Okay. Okay. How do I turn it? Uh, yeah, cool.
Oh. Okay. Let's get back to it. So I'm not. I'm not sure what's going going on with um with that tank, but um. I'll go into the one I finished and I'll show show you how that works and then I'll show you some of the other uh, engines and examples I've got. So we got uh, this is the actually the only, one thing I want to do here was add another light. Probably looks really weird to everyone when I'm like slowly moving over to this image just because I'm looking at over there but trying to drag the window from far away is a bit easy to see. So hard, difficult to see. So here we go. Here's the game. So there's the red line. He's using that uh, navigate multicolored navigation mesh which you automatically generate uh, in the scene window. And if I press space bar, I'll shoot tank shells. And that's that's just spawning it at a object at the end of the turret, and we can drive around. And Blender has really good physics. Everything everything here is um, has got the bullet physics in it. So even even the shells, when I shoot them, they'll bounce. It's not realistic. It's quite silly. So when he shoots me, I'll just flip upside down. And that that counts as losing the game. Um, I did, but he didn't flip over and become immobilized. So <laughs> this is uh, so th those shells. I just tell Blender that I want I want to create those uh, bullets at a point and give them a linear velocity in the y-axis of 120, which, oh, no, oh, no, I'm not dead yet. He, he doesn't look like he's doing too well. Go. No. Ah. <laughs> uh. Play, playing with physics in Blender is the is a lot of fun. I think I think if anyone was ever going to make a really good game in Blender, it would it would just have to be something silly and with lots of physics. And um, there we go. That counts as dying, falling out of the world. Um. So yeah, here I've got a big stack of blocks, and if I play the, press P and play it from here, you'll see that those blocks will just fall down like that. So you've got absolutely fantastic uh, physics um, ready to go. It's part of Blender, so it's already in there. Where if, if you look down here and you can see that little ball flying off there, that's actually the uh, physics tab. And so the shells come out of here. They've just got another actuator here. It's a keyboard actuator, and it says once once that keyboard actuator is on, I want to add an object called a tank shell, which is another object. Um, so it says I want to add the tank shell here, and I want to shoot it out with a linear velocity of on the local y-axis of 120. So that's kind of like an arbitrary sort of sort of number, but uh, at that scale and with all the other variables of mass and things that it's already uh, got as defaults, I found that that worked quite well. And the tank shell is just a um, it's just kind of like a bullet shape. But if I if I mess with um, 
if I mess with the game a little bit, I can get some funny effects. So I can, I'll find where my enemy tank is. Whoops. Um, there he is, yeah. So this is something funny I was, I saw this morning. I can go down there and I can, um, can't quite, I'm going to have to see here. Okay, so it says if, I think it says every 150 milliseconds or maybe that's 1.5 seconds, if the players in front of me shoot at him and the sensor here that it has is called a radar sensor attached to this little, little placeholder called an empty and it says it's got a radar sensor, so just a cone that goes outwards. Um, in the y-axis, a bit like this, a bit like in the shape of this light or something. And if the player is in there, then it's true. And if it's true, then add the object, the tank shell, at the position there with a y velocity of 200. So before it was looking every, it was saying every one and a half seconds. So now I'm go, I've just taken off that one and a half seconds, so that it will just go bananas and it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, it should just start spamming tank shells at me. <laughs> yeah, and drive in, into them and just whoa. Yeah, that's that's what Blender is all about. It is if you're gonna make a game with Blender, like like I was saying before, start with the camera and where you want it, or even better, start with the tools and work and build the game around the tools that you've got. Um, in the case of Blender, you definitely definitely some opportunity there. For whoops, I didn't want to just bring. Okay, I'll select this guy. I'm just going to make him a bit close to the enemy tank again so I don't have to drive all the way over there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> So, okay, so that's the tank game example and I'll just do one more quick physics example and then I'll show you some of the other tools of, um, I've got here. Yeah, true. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's got, maybe it has a minimum, but you're right, if it was truly doing it continuously it would have been a uh, solid thing but maybe it has some sort of collision sensor because the the shells can collide off each other so yeah hmm? did they no nah, it doesn't really it doesn't have that much Sorry, it it works. It works. Everything everything has its own x, y, and z axis. So you've got the world x, y, and z axis. As I was saying before, if the world x is that way, y is that way, z is that way, then when you're standing with the world, your x, y, and z. But then when you rotate, your x is going to be with the world's y. So it's that difference between world and local coordinates. Um, yeah, so 
Uh, there's a million things you could do with the physics in this game. So I'll just create a, a, a cube and then I'll create a um, bunch of spheres or something. It's a lot of fun to uh, just mess around with uh, with Blender with the physics and just and just see what you can come up with. Like that's that's the one thing it seems to have that um, most game engines don't really aren't really that physics friendly. You can't usually just quickly and randomly throw things in and then do some strange physics simulators like I, I think somebody could make a really cool pinball game with um with Blender. So <laughs> like one of those downhill skiing games or something like that. Um, Blender game. Okay, I'll just throw a quick keyboard controller onto that block there, and I'll make it so when when I press the space bar, it just goes forward and knocks those balls around, send them flying up that slope. Physics is something pretty new to games, and people aren't really sure. I mean, it's about we've had we've had reasonable physics in games for almost ten years, but people still haven't worked out what to, what they should or could do with it. And in terms of physics games, I haven't really seen seen anything too amazing. Um, that looks like it's negative on the local x-axis, so I'll go. 20. We've got different types of motion too. If you wanted to make a character, there's a thing in there so you can say jump and just press spacebar and it'll do a jump and you set the jump height just for quickly doing like a, a Mario type game. If you wanted to make Mario, you just force the camera to uh, you know look at the world one way, set the camera to orthographic and then uh, you know then you've got a side scroller like Mario. Um, so let's see what happens here. I mean, you could make a whole building and knock that down, or there's so many funny little things you could do with physics. Let's see if that works. Whoops. No. Is it an? Um, rigid body. It's collision bounds. See if that was the problem. Mm. Maybe it's going too fast. It's tricking it or something. Oh, what's static? That should be rigid body. I'll try dynamic. Hmm. So what I was thinking, it doesn't say that it is. Oh, that might be. Let's see. That's that might have been what was confusing it. There we go. So. Yeah, it's not doing too great this time, is it? Maybe it's because the box is, um, hasn't got enough mass on it or something. Make the box way more, so five mass.
Oh, that's not too exciting, but that that's essentially what you do. You just sit here and just spend some time having some fun with this. Maybe if I, rather than moving the location, I will move the linear velocity. See what that does. Oops, it's the wrong way. Minus 10. Okay, that's a bit better, minus 25. <laughs> there we go. So that's what I wanted to do, just demonstrate that you can... So you've got a lot of tools like linear velocity and mass and torque and all sorts of things in there to mess around with. Um, yeah, just just give it a shot. Just download Blender and have a mess around. Huh? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it's But I think I think I think everything is relative to each other. So, it, what you say the linear velocity of one is equal to is dependent upon the scale of your world, and the scale of your world then sets what other things like mass, what the scale of mass is. So it really depends on how big you make it because if I create a really big box and give it a linear uh, velocity of 10, it's going to go really slowly or at least seem to, but if I create a really little box and give it a linear velocity of 10, it's going to seem to go really quickly. So it's, it's all relative um, within there. So the next thing does anybody play uh, first-person shooters? One person. Okay. Um, well, this is really cool. This is called uh, the Cube Engine. And um, this is this is a first-person shooter. It's got uh, bot match and stuff stuff like that. So I can go start match, and I'll do uh, free for all. And there's a lot of levels, and I'll tell you why there's a lot of levels in a second. Oh, this looks like a level based on Quake. This this engine is absolutely fantastic. It is amazing, and the reason it's amazing is because of its level editor. So I can't really see too well. I can see up there. So it's a first-person shooter engine. I've got bots in there, firing and shooting and. He's got a shotgun. And what makes this game really cool is if I press Control and E, now I've gone into this different mode and I can move around and I've got this white square here and I can click on something and then I can use the mouse wheel and I can extrude it. And what that means is all of these levels can be made on the internet, they are made on the internet by groups of people just flying around the level, clicking a square, and then right-clicking, and then using the mouse wheel, and just making whole levels like that. And then you can select a bunch of cubes, and you hold down Q, and you can angle them. And people have made really massive uh, levels like this. I'll just go somewhere where there isn't all these bots. Bottom out to zero. Um, Coop Edit. Uh, let's see. So you can see how many levels there are. And if you wanted to make a first-person shooter, um, this is this is an excellent engine to mod because you can just you can just put whatever you're working on out there and get people to make levels for it. Um, I hold down G and scroll up the mouse wheel. And then I can make a big cube like that, and bang, you know, I've got this massive 
thing there, then I just run down here, start cutting chunks out of that. Dick, 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 cut that out. No, I'm pretty sure this actually much well predates Minecraft. Um, I mean, the, the idea here isn't to create block-looking levels at all. It's not supposed to look block blocky. Most of the good levels, they, they just look like the levels from any other first-person shooter. But the way this works is you can you build things out of blocks and then you uh, chisel them up, them up and... Yeah, I'm 99% sure this. Yeah, this does predate Minecraft. Um, actually, this this in particular came out in. Uh, I think this came out 2005, 2006. So it's it's considerably old technology. It's got graphics similar to Quake 3 or something like that. But people people have made updates to the engine. But this is sort of the the core version that any update would be on top of. And these these blocks can just, they can really get quite small. So, I mean... Okay, so I think I press, uh, just make this bigger and I'll select the wall and I think it's F2. Yeah, so I press F2 and then I get a lot of textures. Um, but you can make your own textures, and people who mod the engine that make their own uh, games and the such for this, they usually get rid of all these textures and just focus on their own textures. So F2 again to get out of there, and um, I think it's uh, K. I press K and it redoes the lighting. Um, so yeah, you can just keep adding textures in like that. You can import 3D your own... Uh, your own models too. Um, I'll try. Okay, so here's I think that's um, yeah F4, and then we've got this selection of of models. So I'll click there and I'll press F4. And what do we got? Palm tree. So I can throw a palm tree in there. Anything you model in Blender or whatever you can throw into this game engine. And um, there's a newer version I, uh, called uh, Tesseract. And they're, they're pretty active on IRC. So you can just go on IRC and have a, have a bit of a chat with the guys there. I've had a bit of a chat with them. It's a pretty friendly community. You can go in there and you can say, oh, I'm working on this level. And... Um, People can come into the into the game and straight in the game, and everyone's making the level together at the same time, and it's just it's just really unheard of, and it's really unique, and it's really awesome, and there's just not much like it in um, game development. So, so yeah, if you if you've got this on your computer and and um, you go into multiplayer, you you might see other people are are um, making. Maps. Oh, it's not. It's not going. Must be a proxy here or something that's stopping it. But usually, you can just click on the server browser, and there might be people making a level. Just made. Usually, you they they want to make levels with people they've made levels before, because somebody can just come along and just select a whole bunch of the level, and then just go boop, and it's all gone. Um, but but yeah, we've had I've had some funny moments where we sort of play deathmatch, and people just start a making the level while you're death matching in the level. Um, <laughs> so you're running along and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna gonna create a little little spot here where I can set up and shoot people or something, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of fun. It's really, really, really cool. Hey? Yeah, but <laughs> In in that game mode anyway, all you do is you just press E and you can just go through. So you just press E to go back into edit mode and then you'll just fly around. It's no, no, you're invincible then. Um, yeah, it's okay. So I wanted to see the water. I'll see if I can do the water. Um, I think I do. I take the I dig a hole. 
and then I select the hole and then I select a certain height in the hole and I'll say, oh, what's lava? Okay, I put lava there actually. So there's lava. So I'll die if I go into it. Um, okay, so now some water. Um, and it, it's probably quite difficult to understand or see really how detailed le the levels can get in this, but I'll show you. I'll show you another one of the the levels. The last one I showed you wasn't exactly amazing. Um, so we'll select that F3 water. Okay, so E, and the water's pretty good. It's got a nice blur effect. Go inside, look up. You got the refraction of the light. Jump out. Yeah. Okay. Um, go in the water. Um, no, this doesn't have much in the way of physics in it at the moment as far as I'm aware. Um, it is still largely made to be a multiplayer game. The one thing that this has been, uh, this game has actually been really well known for is, um, I know there's a couple networking people in here so I'm sure, you, you know you've got TCP IP and you've got UDP and in UDP they don't check the packets. When you're playing this game multiplayer, it actually uses UDP, so it doesn't check to see if it received the packets properly. It and you don't really have time for that in a game anyway. So when you when you're playing, this game has really excellent uh, networking setup. So people will just keep playing and playing and playing, and the packet size is quite small because it's using it's it's using the UDP to. Um, so, so if there's packet loss, it doesn't freak out. It just it just keeps going, and it goes a lot faster. And it's known really well for having good networking uh, behind it. So physics doesn't really go well with networking. Not when you're trying to work with uh, small network packet sizes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can put objects in there. Someone someone could mod the engine. I'd I'd definitely like to see more come out of the engine. And um, um, have uh, have something cool happen. So I'll go into bot match again. I want to I want to find a nice map because everything you've seen so far is a bit it's a bit whateverish. Um, what have we got here? Elegy. Elegy. So yeah, you can really get some nice, nice looking levels. Yeah, that is a bit dark, isn't it? Okay. Um, let's have a look. Something in the daytime. Something, something with forests or trees. This one looks quite light. Okay, how's that up there? That's okay. So this one's all right. Still, yeah, this is a nice looking level. It's not too complicated. I'm only running a dual core laptop here that I bought about three years, three to four years ago. So this this game is is uh, very uh, well written programming wise. It's uh, done all in C++ and it uses SDL. So um, someone was asking me before what your options are for game development on Linux and I've really tried to cover all the feasible options here um, except I haven't really gone into the Quake and Doom engines which I don't know but they're, they're out there and they're available for Linux. Um, this Sour, Sour Braten or the Cube engine is um, Definitely something something really cool. Pe people have modded it. They've made like sci-fi mods. They've made like Counter-Strike kind of mods and all sorts of things. There's so many maps here. I just want to... There's a really big one. It's got all like grass and trees and it just looks really nice. Uh, uh, Oasis. I'll have a look at what this is. Ah, uh, this is okay. Still quite simple. 
Um, but yeah, so these rocks, for example, they haven't been they haven't been imported. Somebody's actually used this cube tool and they very carefully kind of chiseled things in, I think. Um, and there's all sorts of I think there is a terrain tool to make the terrain more dynamic. So you're not limited to very square shapes. You can get very um, very dynamic shapes and you know it doesn't have to look blocky. Uh, most people realize that when people think of cube engine, obviously I mean it's called cube, that sounds blocky in itself. So um, it's 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 a fantastic engine. Uh, it's written in C++. There's a version out now called Tesseract. Um, yeah, um, so what what else? The final thing I wanted to talk about was we're written in the greatest programming language in the world with the greatest ever um, IDE ever written is Eclipse. And Java to, um, I mean that sarcastically, but um, Eclipse is pretty much what you're going to be uh, using if you want to uh, if you want to make games for Android. So um, it's not Android Studio. It's ADT Eclipse. So libgdx is a is a very cool library. It's cooler than um, Java, even though it's written in Java. And it allows you to do things very well. It actually has programming with libgdx, so that when you're when you're writing in Java, it has certain functions that will actually go into the native C++ code of your Android device, making it much faster to uh, to run on your Android, and of course, uh, speed making things lightweight and running well on Android is so important because every bit of processing power that you waste is killing your battery. So here's something I have been uh, working on, um, and in uh, typical Java style, it's all, you know, um, if I go into the main main class here, you can see it's all public class game implements application listener and then, you know, importing all the libraries under the sun. So that's very typical Java. Um, so I can right click, uh, when, when I run this libgdx, it sets up a, uh, an environment for me. I've got two projects open here, but I'm just going to focus on the one called 0z. Uh, it sets up a folder, just a 0z, the project name, which in your case will just be called project name. Then it will be project name dash Android, project name dash desktop, project name dash HTML, and project name dot dash robo vm. So dash Android is where it has the um, Android Java starter, so you can uh, right click on that and go and go run as, and then it will run it as an Android application on your phone if your phone's plugged in. In the folder that is just the, the project name, that's where you put your core application, your core game, since it's a game library, and in desktop it has the starter for the desktop, so I can right click on the desktop and I can go run as Java application. Uh, okay. And then this is the game I've been working on. Uh, it's a platform on the on this. If I click on this AI that I've got running around and I if I should have got him. Did it get him? No, I didn't get him. Oh, there we go. So if I click on him, he'll aim at the AI and then he'll shoot at the AI no matter where he is because it's meant for Android and it's very difficult to do um, aiming kind of things on Android. 
If I click the screen again, he'll just return back to shooting forwards and that. And then I've got ladders, whoops, here. And uh, jump, hold down, jump, and then he'll go down the platforms, jump, hold down, jump. Yeah, so I can run this on my desktop, <coughs> or I can uh, run it straight on the Android device, or I can actually run it in a HTML environment. It uses GWT, the Google tool that converts Java into JavaScript. Is anybody familiar with that? Google Web Tools or something? Okay. Um, yeah, GWT is so it will automatically convert it to HTML5 and JavaScript. And then RoboVM is uh, the Java thingo for iOS, for iPhone. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I can. That's that's all what libgdx brings to the party. It's really awesome. It's really cool. Um, if you're gonna want to write games for Android, which is a lot of fun, because if you write a game, half of the fun of the game is showing the game to people and saying, "Look what I did." And um, the best way to do that is have it on your phone. So yeah. I, I really think that libgdx is great. Um, uh, ja a lot of people hate Java, and um, there's some things that I think about it are weird. Like um, I, I kind of like the sort of Linux environment where you just have your notepad there, and then you go into the terminal and you just type in G++ or GCC, and you compile it, and everything's nice and it's separate and but for Java, you really kind of do need an IDE because, you know, I mean, you, people call things like orthographic camera, whereas if somebody wrote that for C, they'd probably just call it orthcam or something so you don't have to type too much. Because you've got all the autocomplete features in a Java IDE, so there's no, there's no concept of shortening down your words, you know what I mean? It's, it's left arrow sprite. It's not LA sprite or something like that or... L F T A R W S P R T for left arrow sprite. So in in libgdx you have your te you load your texture which is your image, then you attach your image to the sprite, and then you draw the sprite on the screen, and this um, goes over to OpenGL and draws the draws whatever it is. Um, I wanted to show you tiled. I was talking about tiled before. So if I go File, New, I can make an orthogonal map, which is just squares, or isometric, which is squares but tilted like diamonds, or hexagonal. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use the regular orthogonal, and I'll say I wanted 100 tiles by, um, give it a power of 2, so I'll say 128 tiles wide, 64 tiles high, and I always uh, work with powers of 2, so I'll 32 for the tile height. And here we've got a, a tile thingo, and then we can go tile set, new tile set, um, then we can grab an image, so I'll go to Dropbox, um, libgdx is primarily made for Android, so when you you got those five folders there. You've got the project name folder. You've got project name dash Android. You've got project name dash desktop HTML. Put everything in Android because it when you when you clean go project clean project in in a in Eclipse, it'll copy every all your assets, all your images out of um, out of your Android folder and put it along with everything else. So I got this problem, I can't really see the screen, let's, here we go, so this is just a bitmap image down here, 
and I've told it that the tiles are 32 tiles wide and then I can come up here and I can just start painting that on. And just like you saw in the example I just showed you, that's that's the exact same tile, that brick tile. And um, or I can select a bunch of tiles and I can just paste that in there like that. And then so I'll say that I want that to be a pavement and I'll just grab this pavement bit here and I'll extrude that along. I'll put a door in there, some bricks in there, some windows, some more bricks and bang, bang, bang. That's, that's how you can make a level in tiled. And then over here in your layers panel, you can create separate layers. So for example, in my uh, little game that I just showed you over here in layers, I have a layer called collision. And in that layer, I can put another set of bricks. So I could go red, red. And I can double click. I can't really see it here. Is it right click or double click? I can it's not responding. What am I doing? Um, I don't know why it's not responding. But um, I can I can set properties for for the tiles or I can set properties for the layer so Oh, my right click's not working for some reason. It's not working at all. That's that's odd. Let's see if it's working in the. It's working there. Oh, it's my. I don't know why this is happening. My right click isn't working here. But you can very quickly. Um, you can assign. You can assign properties to the tile. So what I'll do is I'll right click on say the red tile. And then, uh, then it will come up with a little dialog window, um, and I'll just say, "Give it the property solid," and then, so it looks exactly like this: properties, name. So I can say solid value. I can leave it blank or just write solid in there, and I can start painting around with that brush. Um, Oops. So then I can start. Oh, now it doesn't want to paint with the brush. Oh, it's locked. Can't actually see that on my screen. Hold on. So then I can start painting around with that block, that uh, tile that has the property. Uh, that has the property solid. And then everywhere that I've painted that tile that has the property solid, it will come when when Eclipse when libgdx loads that file. Here here it is where it's loading. It says map new tmx loader test map two dot tmx. I can go into that and I can say collision layer equals tiled map layer map get the layer. Um, and then what it says, I can't see that part of the screen here. It, say, it says, um, it says to get the, uh, get the layer called collision, and then it will look at each cell at the x y coordinate of that cell, and that's that's how it has the uh, the different tiles. That's how it has um, collision. So. Um, if I run this as a Java application just one more time, we can see that what he's walking on now has the property platform, and that means so we can jump up and then jump on it, and then these 
other blocks here, they have the property solid. So if he tries to jump up there, he won't get up because it says, oh, that's a solid one. Can't go through that. You can't jump high enough to get up there. Or another property that I've got on one of the tiles in there is a property called ladder. So when he's standing under here and I press jump, he'll start to climb the ladder. Um, or he'll fall through it. If it's only a platform and I hold down jump, he'll just go past it. If I let go, he'll land on it. So that's how you can use the tile, uh, the tiled map editor to quite quickly make uh, 2D uh, games. It's um, pretty fantastic, I think. Okay, so we're almost finished. Um, that covers most of the things I wanted. That covers everything, pretty much, or more or less everything. Um, I'll um, I'll show you some of the games I've made. Um, code. Oops. So I've made a little driving game. It was from the, these games I made in um, C++ with SDL. Actually, I was working on this last time I was here. So I drive around, and it's got velocity working on the car. So you press forward on the velocity, and it moves forward at velocity times delta time. So I was talking about delta time before, and that's in order to make sure it moves forward at a constant rate, um, at a constant rate relative to the time that has gone past, not relative to how fast the frames are going. Is, it, is everybody familiar with the concept of a game loop? Fairly, quite a few people familiar with the concept of a game loop. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a loop that goes past. It says, has anything happened? Has any input happened? Yes, some input has happened. Okay, make the physics react to the input that's happened. Now, draw me a picture on the screen with the results of the physics from the uh, from the input. So when I'm when I'm driving around there here, I'm not doing a very good job. I've got a I've got a bit of a hack going on. If I press spacebar, it'll make the car turn faster. And it will make the um, uh, the quaternion velocity, the velocity, act on the car more than um, what am I trying to say? You know how if you have a spaceship in space and you go forward on your thrusters and it goes, and then you turn the spaceship so it's facing a totally different direction. It still keeps going this way just because it turned. But if you have a train and it's going along its tracks and it goes forward and the tracks change, the whole, the entire velocity goes with the tracks. The train changes direction. So what I've done here is I've mixed those two types of physics together, the spaceship and the train. So when you press spacebar for the handbrake, it acts a little bit more like a spaceship in space. So you can slide a little bit, as opposed to when you don't, then it will, then it will act a little bit more like a train. But at all times, it's a mixture between that, those two kinds of physics. And every time I go around there, it'll tell, it'll say how long I went around there. I went around there for 53 seconds, and the best lap I did here was 30 seconds. So that's that's pretty important to get some scoring happening as quickly as possible in your games, because when you show it to people. They really like to um, see that, and um, whoops. Final thing I wanted to show you was this was my other game. Um, boo! This was written in C plus plus. I think C plus plus is a lot of fun to write in, just because it's very um, it's it's not much mussing about. You're not you're not trying to implement somebody else's code or too many strange APIs. You're really just directly 
working with the system and everything that's there, you know what it is and there's probably um, not um, too much behind it. So yeah, this is a Space Invaders type of game I made with OpenGL. And so for those, ro the purple, I call them asteroids, the rotating ones that are coming at me. For them I had to use um, trigonometry so that um, those points rotate around a point in the middle. So the top point will be the middle point plus one and then so forth to make the points rotate. I'm not sure if I got that across correctly. But like I was saying before, OpenGL is a state machine. So you say OpenGL, I'm going to draw triangles, point here, you know, 20 five high, 20 across, five high, and then 15 across, zero high, and then 10 across, zero high, and you get a triangle. Um, that's, that's how that works. In this case, it was draw a point at x position plus, um, at, at, the, at the new x position plus, plus zero, y position plus one, and then x position plus one, y position minus one, and then x position minus one, y position minus one, and then use trigonometry so that each of those points rotates around the central central point, if you can get what I'm saying there. It's, um, I think it's like the position times cosine the radian or something like that. Anyway, so that does that does it for my for my talk. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Blender's open source, so if you wanted to put electromagnetism in there, you maybe you probably could. Um, I don't, I don't know what the limitations of it are, but um, magnetism, you know, you could probably program that in somehow. Like I said, it's got Python in there, and it's just got bullets. So, hmm? exactly, yeah. So just put those, put those equations in. It does have mass. It. I don't know if it has thickness, like the thickness of air versus the thickness of water to slow down an object. I, I had to program that in my car game, the thickness. I um, can't remember why I did that. I just did that for when it was going around corners for the amount of speed it reduces itself uh, by. It was quite a lot of fun learning about those maths, so it's encouraged me to get much more into maths doing the, the little car game, especially just working on how I could hack that handbraking in. If if you wanted if you wanted you could use the bullet API, that's the uh, the big physics thing. But um, some people spend a lot of time just trying to plug all a bunch of APIs together, and then once they've done it, they're proud of a project that is a a bit like you know a bunch of cats sticky taped together or something. You know, <laughs> just but um, yeah, bullet physics, C plus plus. Don't know what. No. Has anybody been inspired to make games now? Yep. Cool. <laughs> you could use bl Blender. Blender. Yeah. Yeah. Do what. Do with Blender whatever you want, or the Bullet Engine. Mm. Yeah, it's really, really quick just to do things in, 
in Blender. You've got cloth physics, you've got liquid physics, you've got yeah, the the bullet um the bullet physics engine has been getting a lot more popular because uh, Nvidia had their own uh, proprietary physics engine or still has called PhysX and they didn't really let AM, AMD didn't use it, didn't didn't really want to use it. They'd have to redo their graphics cards. Uh, I was reading about it, but the thing about uh, that is that AMD said, "Well, let's support the open source one to some extent," and started uh, supporting Bullet. So a lot of people are preferring to use Bullet as the uh, as the physics engine of choice these days. It's um, I think it works with the graphics card. So. Graphics accelerated physics. That's what I was just saying. Nvidia, Nvidia released PhysX, and that was their thing for their physics processing thing. Bullet, bullet, bullet. Okay, bullet is graphics accelerated physics. PhysX is physics accelerated physics. You know what I mean? They've actually got a chip. On there that doesn't do graphics at all, whereas whereas Bullet actually works with the graphics chips and the the. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm not really the best person on hardware. I can get things wrong all the time, but you know. Um, Havoc was the other one. Yeah. Ha Havoc. Ah, okay. Yeah. I remember Havoc used to be on um, 3D Studio Max, but these days um, Bullet seems to be really big. So there was a while there too where OpenGL uh, kind of died around OpenGL 3.2 and nobody wanted to use OpenGL and everybody used DirectX, which obviously is really bad for Linux because DirectX is Microsoft proprietary, and um, but yeah, lately open um, things have been really good for OpenGL and things have been really good for uh, Bullet. So that's a real uh, excellent, uh, excellent, uh, excellent things happening for open source. Um, I haven't actually used the API directly. I've just used things that work with it. So I have used o, uh, OpenGL directly. Um, but yeah, so ev everything I've said today is basically if you haven't done any game programming before and you want to just jump in and you haven't done much programming at all, use Python and Pygame. If you want to do it with Android, use LibGDX and Java. And if you're good at programming and um, then you can use C++. And if you want to load 3D models with C++, you use ASIMP, A-S-S-I-M-P. That loads 3D models, and SDL is the popular one at the moment for receiving keyboard input and playing sounds, and that's what Valve has been um, working on. Yeah. Cool. So... I I think we're all going to go to the pub in a minute, Piermont Bridge Hotel. Come along, have a few brews, and I'll see you there. Another question?